Okay, folks, five shots with this Diana 240 Classic and 177 shooting H&N Field Match Heavies at 8.18 grain. There you have it, five shots. Miss Review. Shot four was 517. Shot three is 513. Shot two is 513. Shot one is 520. High of 520. Low of 513. Average 516. Extreme spread of seven. Standard deviation of three. And that is before I go in and replace the trigger module and greasing up the spring, what have you. And then we'll retest this gun again. Hello, welcome to another episode of Air Gun Reviews and Hunting Channel. What I have in front of you is what I call the baby model 34 Diana. It's a Diana 240 classic 177 caliber. Refurb for 125 bucks. Not including the shipping. But anyways, it's a fine shooting gun. Very accurate. But I have heard or read on some of the forums and some of the people that I've been uh, talking to that the T05 trigger in the 240, sometimes it'll work just fine and sometimes it don't. Well, this trigger system, when you cock it and you go to squeeze the trigger, nothing happens. You have to re-cock it again, then it'll fire. Well, that's not acceptable to me. Could I have sent it back? Sure I could have. But, I'm a type of person that's into uh, air guns, PCP, springers. I have the equipment to tear apart a springer or repair a PCP. Doesn't matter what brand it is. I've been inside them. Thanks to uh, my friend over in the Philippines for guiding me and showing me a few tricks about PCPs as well as uh, reading things on the internet about repairing PCPs and talking to my friend Ernest Rowe. I contacted Pyramid Air. They uh, referred me to Air Venturi and I talked to a person by the name of Gene over in Air Venturi and I told him, I said, hey, this is the problem I'm having with this 240, you cock it, squeeze the trigger, doesn't, doesn't fire. Other times it, it works just fine. He says, okay, well, I'm gonna send you a new trigger module and that's what I'm gonna replace in this particular gun. So, if you have one of these or purchase a refurb or even a brand new one, they're having some issues with the, the T05. Not all of them, but you know, in my, my circumstance, I received one that 
It was a refurb and has a trigger problem with letting go of the sear in order to fire. So this is the reason why Gene sent me this. I didn't want to send the gun back and I know how to repair it. So I figured, you know what? Why not do a video? So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started. You definitely will need one of these. This is made by Sun Optics. There's another one made by Air Venturi. It's a lot simpler. It attaches to the weaver or dovetail and you can compress the spring that way. Well, I would have bought that one instead, but this came out first and I needed a spring compressor and it does what it's supposed to do. It does a fine job, so you need some type of spring compressor. Next, you definitely want to get one of these. I bought it on eBay. It comes in very handy. It's a 16 piece gunsmithing kit, 14 punches with, with a two sided hammer. Yeah, the hammer. Always got to be hammering on something, right? So, why not hammer with something plastic? And you got a brass piece here, and you got brass punches here as well as some metal ones. You gotta have one of those. And of course, a quality Phillips or a flathead screwdriver. And those are the things you're gonna need. So, let me go ahead and remove the stock and then we'll uh, get into taking out the spring and all that kind of good stuff. I'm gonna go in there and re-grease everything and replace this trigger module. Be right back. I went ahead and took the trigger module out, the old one. Two pins here, knocked it out like so. Under the spring compressor because a lot of tension on the on the main spring here. And this is a factory refurb, but as I can see right now, there's way too much oil and it was dieseling a little bit out, out the barrel. So I'm gonna clean all this up with brake clean. Then I'm going to grease the spring. Now I have to get the piston out, but before I can do that, I gotta knock this pin out right here which I'll do right now. Pins out. And levers out. Now I can continue on Removing everything out out the cylinder. Ta da! There it is. And it is way, way over grease. No wonder it was dieseling. So, we're gonna take care of that, clean it all up, and go from there. I shall return. Okay, I got a small screwdriver, E clip. I did not know that there was an E-clip that slid in here on this caulking arm. And you put the pin in, because when I removed the pin, I saw the E-clip fall out. And that's what keeps the pin from falling out when you cock the gun. Is this one little E clip? And it can be a pain in the hiney to get back on the groove on the pin, which is what I'm trying to do right now. 
So, I think I got it. Yes, I did. Okay. So remember that, folks, that there is a clip right here. When you take that, take that pin out, you first have to remove the E-clip that's in this gap right there where I'm pointing at with my screwdriver, right there. Okay. So... Now, the next phase, spring. I'm going to use lithium grease. On both ends. And on the spring. Why not? Now, of course, I'm going to do springs all the way around. I heard Tom Gaylord, or I read somewhere in Tom Gaylord's uh, blog on Pyramid Air Academy that some folks like him, you know, the old timers swear by lithium grease. I've never heard of that, you know. I usually use the black tar, so you know what? If I don't like it, I'll just take it back apart. But I am curious as to see if it is true that it does work better than the black tar. No idea. I'm just, this is what I read. The guy that I bought my CZ Slava 634, an older gentleman, and that's what he used in the gun I bought from him, as well as he has one himself, and he uses strictly lithium grease in all of his springs, and he's an old timer and swears by it. Well, I was always been the tar type of guy, but you know, I'm open to new ways and learning. So I am sharing this information with you all you know, out there, you know, who may have springers. Not just this particular springer, but all springers. I'm going to be doing a video very soon on the disassembly of my Hatsan Alpha Youth. Because there is a twang to that as well. And I want to know if this grease, lithium grease, will do the job. That aside for now, here's the old trigger assembly. Put it in there with my extra spare parts to put away for whatever, whenever. When my kids get older, maybe I'll, I'll put the front and rear sights back on this particular gun, who knows? Lots of possibilities. I always keep keep my parts. You know? Now we are going to reassemble the trigger assembly. Now that we got the grease in there, gotta remove this rubber band. Keep everything all together, just like that, folks. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details here. As you can see, I'm gonna to install it, 
I'll be right back as soon as I have everything installed, the trigger in place. See you Trigger module's in place, everything seems to uh, function just fine. End cap on. Putting everything back in the stock. And tighten down the screws. And we're gonna go over to the crony and see what this thing does before and after. Going to be doing a few review, full review on this particular gun very soon. Showing you the groups, optics, UTG 41640AO. Like I have on all my other Springers, except for two. One of them has the 3940, 39. My 50 UTG and my HW97 has got a Hawk 41240. But this is the piece I put on here. It's just a rubber hose. It just makes it so much more comfortable to pull down and cock. But let's go into the other room and get it set up for the crony. Dan, two, 240 Classic 177. After the rebuild and trigger module, H&M finale match, 18.1 grain. Five shots. Five seventeen. Well, I can tell you right now that the twang is gone. Five seventeen. No more smoking, decent, in other words. Five thirteen. If anything, it was a learning experience. How about that? But I do notice a difference. 510. One more. 515. Let's review. Five nineteen for the high, low to five ten, stream spread or uh, uh, average uh, FPS is five fifteen, extreme spread of two or ex extreme spread of nine, standard deviation of three. There you go. I can live with that. Triggers nice. Nice and light, very predictable trigger. I'm gonna shoot it one more time. It hit the wall on the first, first, second stage, the first stage, then goes off. Very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah. That 
Is it as smooth as uh, HW97 with the new CFL installed? No comparison. The CFL wins hands down. And this is no sales pitch. This is my own personal and my own opinion. It's smoother than this gun. And this gun doesn't shoot bad at all. But the Beeman R7 now, it's like almost, it almost feels like shooting a PCP. Best way to describe it. Now, here's another problem area that I want to show you folks. You see, you see this right here? Let me get a pointer. 